So before I fall over from exhaustion, I'm going to do one more, because I'm kind of on a roll here, because literally this is two seconds after the last video ended. Um, and so, but you should be watching this after you've practiced some of these calculations already. Um, and the calculation is going to be talking about one last way we can measure something. So we've been talking about like water and sodium chloride and aluminum and iron, and these are all things we can measure in grams. Those are easy things to measure them out in, and that's why we like these values. Avogadro's number and uh, molar mass is because it gets us to grams from things that aren't easily measured. Like moles are just a quantity, and atoms are super duper small. And so that's great for those things. But think about like oxygen gas, or hydrogen gas, or helium, or whatever gas you want, carbon dioxide. You can't really measure out that mass. And these are atoms and molecules, so they have a mass. And in fact, we can calculate their molar mass. Let's look at, I guess, carbon dioxide, because that's an easy gas to think about. CO2. Its molar mass is going to be carbon plus two oxygens. Carbon is here on the periodic table, so it has a molar mass of 12.01 grams per mole. And two oxygens, well, that has a mass of 16.00 grams per mole. So when I add that all up, it's going to be 44.01 grams per mole. And that is the molar mass of carbon dioxide. So that would be great, but measuring a gas is, you can't really measure the grams of a gas. But there is another unit of measurement we can use for gases. Think about filling up a balloon it takes up a certain amount of space. That's volume. And there's a very easy way to measure the volume of a gas if you know how many moles there are. And that is the molar volume. So we have molar mass, and that's for everything. We can use molar mass for everything. Wow, I forgot the U. Volume. I'm gonna leave it. So molar volume is literally how much volume one mole of a gas takes. And what's amazing is that at a constant temperature and pressure, like 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure, that number is the same for every single gas. And that number is 22.4 liters. That's like, well, that. it's about this. This is 22.4 liters about, um, I assume. I didn't actually check, but that's what the box says, so I'm going with it. 22.4 liters is about this much space. And it's easier to measure the space a gas takes up at zero degrees Celsius in one atmosphere of pressure. So those are my standard temperatures and pressures for this. Easier to measure that space in liters than it would be to measure the mass of this gas, because gases don't weigh very much but they take up a lot of space. So 22.4 liters is the volume of one mole of a gas. And this only applies to gases, and that's very important. It doesn't apply to liquids, and it doesn't apply to solids, but it's very helpful. For example, say, let's say I have a balloon, and I blow it up, and let's say I blow it up to a volume of 1.5 liters. And since it's my breath, it's mostly CO2. Let's assume it's all CO2. And 1.5 liters of CO2 is the volume that that carbon dioxide takes up. I can know all sorts of things about that volume. For example, the first thing I can know is how many moles of CO2 are in that balloon. Do I have a balloon? Sorry. Should have been more prepared. I thought I had a balloon. be really sad when I don't actually have a balloon. Oh, major bummer. I don't have one. Okay, well, it doesn't matter, but it would have been cool. Anyway, so if I have 1.5 liters of CO2, we can use the molar volume. This is a conversion factor, just like Avogadro's number, just like molar mass. So if I have 1.5 liters of CO2, I'll multiply by the molar volume. And let's set it up as a conversion factor. 
I want to cancel my leaders, so I put that on the bottom, and I want my moles to be on top. So that will get me from leaders to moles. Now let me fill it in with the right numbers. 22.4 liters in one mole. So what I'm doing is I'm taking 1.5 divided by 22.4. 1.5 divided by 22.4, and I get 0 0.6, sorry, 0 0.0, 0 0.067 moles of CO2. And I put two significant digits there, by the way, because that had two significant digits. This one has three, um, so that's going to limit me to two, because this one has fewer significant digits. That's how many moles of CO2 were in that balloon, that 1.5 liter balloon. And notice that it's a pretty small number. And that's because gases take up a lot of space but without a lot of mass. And in fact, we could find the mass of that amount of CO2. We could just take 0.067 moles of CO2. And if I wanted to know how many grams of CO2 that was, I could set up a converting vector with grams on top and moles on the bottom to cancel out those moles. And look, I've set it up so that I can just plug in my molar mass of CO2, because this is carbon dioxide, which has a molar mass of 44.01 grams per one mole of CO2. So my moles cancel, and I just take that number that I had and multiply by 0.44, sorry, by 44.01. And that is actually 2.9 sorry, 2.9 grams of CO2. Now look at how small that number is. This amount of water, this small little teeny bit of water, is 18 grams. When you think about a gas, it expands and fills a lot more space. So it's 1.5 liters is a much bigger volume but it only weighed 2.9 grams. And that kind of shows how gases can expand to take up more space than they normally would if they were a solid or a liquid. So that converted from liters to moles, and then we went from moles to grams. I can also go to particles, and I will show you that as well. I'm gonna start with that many moles, six, seven moles of CO2, and I can use Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. In this case, I have molecules of CO2, and that's how many molecules are in one mole. Moles cancel, top to bottom, and I'll just take that number and multiply by Avogadro's number. Now, this isn't as useful, but it is still, you know, information that we can know about this sample of CO2. When I do that multiplication, I get 4.0 times 10 to the 22 molecules of CO2. That's just a large number because we have still a large amount of these molecules of CO2. So those are all things I can do. And so that kind of shows all of the things we can do. And that's what you should be looking at on that picture that I posted. Um, that's probably the thing I preface is that, hey, before you watch these videos, you're looking at these pictures. And it shows you how to convert between liters and moles and from moles to grams, and from moles to molecules, or whatever particle we have. So that's what molar volume is. It's just this conversion vector, and it works for every gas. Um, it works the other way as well, so I guess I'll go the other way, and then I'll be done with this one. So if I had a different gas, and it doesn't matter, let's say it's oxygen gas. Let's say, I don't know, I've got 500 with a decimal, moles of oxygen gas, O2. I want to know how much volume that the 500 moles of O2 takes up. Specifically, it's going to be at zero degrees Celsius, but we'll assume that always. Um, and that many moles of O2 is going to take up 22.4 um, liters per one mole. Now, 500 times 22.4 is going to be 11,200 liters. Um, that's how much space that oxygen gas is going to take up. It's a very large amount. That's 11,000 liters. So 500 moles of O2 is a very large amount. But remember in the previous video, I had 830 
grams of sodium, sorry, 830 moles of sodium chloride, and that was only a few kilograms. And kilograms are heavy, but like, I'm a few kilograms. I'm something, I don't know, I don't know how to convert between pounds and kilograms, but I'm something like 100, 200 kilograms, I don't know. Um, but that was less than the 830 moles of sodium chloride weighed. 11,000 liters is coming from fewer moles of O2. So it's this large number. So this gas expands and, spill, and fills more space. And this is easier to measure for gases than mass is. So that's why we use molar volume. And that's how we convert from liters to moles of a gas.